What's up, y'all? Uh, I just got a text message from Jenny. Um, she said, get the camera out. I don't really know what to expect. All right, she here she is. What's up? I got the camera. Okay, so look at this. So one, I thought there was only gonna be one return to sender and there was two apparently that like I just didn't know. And then it turns out that they look like this. Look at this. They, oh my gosh. Literally, it looks like they drop kicked it across a soccer field. There goes the rest of the day. Yeah, what the heck? We're Jenny and Davis. We fly through hurricanes for research and build furniture for fun. A while ago, we came up with a business plan to sell quality furniture, which brings people together. Follow along as we build our business empire. Empire? Yes, Jenny, big goals. Okay, we're starting an empire. Maybe one day it'll span beyond the garage. So one of the things that we do on this YouTube channel is document the progress of our second business building furniture. This time, instead of doing all custom work, we're trying to start out with a couple batched out products that we can sell at scale and then build off the top of that with newer products. We've had a lot of success selling cutting and charcuterie boards as gifts. And one of the best avenues we've been doing that is selling realtors closing gifts. And we personalize the homeowner's name on it and everything else. The idea being that they like their gifts so much when they get it that they look us up and maybe buy a table or something from us down the road. If you're subscribed, this should not be news to you. We hear a lot of y'all asking questions and you're confused down in the comments, but all you gotta do is subscribe, watch the videos and you won't be confused anymore. So hit that subscribe button. I'll wait. So we've been selling these cutting boards to realtors and that's been going really, really well. Until Jenny got a notification that one of our boards got returned to sender. So she went to our post office box to pick up the board and figure out what the problem was. And that's when this happened. What's up y'all? Uh, I just got a text message from Jenny. All right, she, here she is. Look at this. So one, I thought there was only gonna be one return to sender and there was two apparently that like I just didn't know. And then it turns out that they look like this. Look at this. They, oh my gosh. Literally, it looks like they drop kicked it across a soccer field. So what are you upset about? Well, one, I'm upset that they look like that discolored. I know they're gonna, I know they're gonna get beat up in shipping, but like. Well, we've seen some other people on Instagram open theirs up and they didn't look this bad. Right, they didn't. I mean, they looked like normal shipping beat up, but they didn't look like this bad. But my biggest concern, honestly, is like if the boards are still okay. If they look like this, but the boards are okay, like, fine. So I guess we're opening them up? Yeah. Just the crinkle paper. Just the crinkle paper. I'm just worried about the corners. That's all I'm worried about. Does it? It might be fine, guys. Dude, it, it might, might be, be fine. fine. Dog. Oh my gosh. There's literally nothing wrong with it. Dude, there's nothing. There's like not even a dent on the. No, nothing. No. We send this thing right back out. Seriously, like it'll go out. Wow. High five. High five. I mean, yeah, there's like, there's some rips and tears in the corners and stuff, but like, it just looks like it was dropped because these boxes, when these boxes are new, like you can't flex them. They have to be like intentionally creased to look like this. See the difference? I hope you can see the difference on camera. But like, the box isn't even that heavy. It's like six pounds. But like this was like crushed. It must've had something really heavy sitting on top of it. One of these, the corner's like all mushed in. So I know that one was dropped. So I know that one was dropped. So I know that one was dropped. The ends aren't too bad, but they were very clearly picked up by the side and it like creased it because of the weight of it or whatever. Anyway, the box looks pretty rough, which we kind of knew it would look rough. That's why we got black boxes instead of white boxes. Well, I don't know. Seems fine. Let's check the other one. That looks bad. Well, that, yeah, that's just because the card was taped there, though. I know, it wasn't, though. And the card was sliding around. Yeah, so you need to quit yeah. taping the cards. Okay. Because that's not doing any good. Yeah, yeah, that's good to know. Corners look fine. Where was the corner that was dropped? Uh, 
I'm like extra this one. worried about this one. No, look, dude, this is, oh, that's Ooh, it. Oh, okay. Yeah, that corner was very. That corner was dropped. All right, so we're a little upset because the board got squished on one corner. Um, it just looks like the box got dropped. I don't know yeah, from what height, but it like to mush that much of the corner in. To it mush had to have cherry? Been, I mean, cherry is, it's it's softer, but it is not a, it's not like pine. Right. So the board had to fall from at least five, 10 feet or so. And it doesn't look terrible. I mean, like to somebody who's not a woodworker, they probably wouldn't even notice. I just... It definitely rounded out the corner. So these boxes looked terrible. Like I knew they would look bad. They're getting shipped. They're gonna get dinged up. I did not know people were gonna be drop kicking them across the entire country. And I think it was overall just a shock that, I don't know, the boards get torn up so much because they look so nice. And that's like part of the product itself is that the packaging is so nice. And to see it just torn to shreds is like, Frustrating. So the first one actually looked really good. There wasn't anything wrong with it. We could literally resend that board just as it is today. And I think I got my hopes up a little bit for the second box. The second box looked just like the first box. I, you couldn't really tell a difference between the two of them, but the second box had clearly been dropped right on the corner of the board. That whole corner was like rounded over and mushed down. And we couldn't just box that one up and send it again. We've never had a complaint about the boards. This is actually the first time we've even gotten a return to sender on one of our boards. Also, a ton of people have shared the unboxing experience on Instagram before and none of the boxes looked this bad. Honestly, I think the majority of it was just the fact that they had to be returned to sender. So they shipped all the way out and all the way back. And box number two had been returned to sender twice. So it made it through the mail like four times. So in order to eliminate these return to sender issues, we gotta ask ourselves, what is return to sender and how does it happen? So what is return to sender? Return to sender is when you try to mail something to somebody, whether that be through UPS or the postal service or some other international shipping company, and you mail it and it goes all the way through the mailing and shipping process to the end of the line. And if the address that you've typed in has a couple of numbers transposed, if you don't get the street number right, what they do is they try to deliver it. They assume what you meant, they try to put it in the right spot or if they just can't find it, what happens is the last delivery person will then send it back to where the return address said it came from. That's one version of return to sender. Another way this could happen is if somebody refuses delivery. Have you ever had something in your mailbox that was to somebody else that used to live at your address? You can just write return to sender on there, put it back in the mailbox and they'll take it and send it back. So if somebody refuses delivery of something, you'll get a return to sender. I'm sure there's a couple other fringe cases that we can't think of right now, but at this moment, those two are really the only scenarios that we can envision somebody will go through. So did we get the wrong address? Honestly, we, we thought we did. When I first looked at the box, I was like, we must have messed up this address. But I double checked the email with the address the realtor wanted the board sent to, and it was correct. They even tried to switch a couple of the numbers in the address to try to get it to the right place. But still, it came back. Which leads us to our second option of somebody refusing delivery. So it turns out we called this realtor back to try to get this whole address thing figured out. And she told us that uh, this was not a client who was super keen on receiving packages. He didn't know it was coming. It was just getting sent right to him. It's a gift. It's, there's supposed to be a little bit of surprise there, but some people, even if their name is on the package, if they don't recognize where it's coming from, they have a tendency to just send it back. Funny enough, that's the same thing that happened with the second box that got returned to sender. Uh, it was sent to a realtor's office and uh, we learned in a roundabout way that this realtor doesn't really like receiving gifts to the office. So it also got immediately returned to sender. So now we're at a crossroads crossroads. We can go one direction, which is trying to eliminate any and every return to sender option in the entire world. We can try to be explicitly clear. We can try to mail something ahead of the board saying, hey, your realtor has bought you a gift. We've got all sorts of ideas on how to maybe eliminate return to sender problems, or we can use our time a little bit more effectively and just protect the boards a little bit better so that when they do come back, we can find a good address to send them to 
and go from there. So as much as we want to solve this return to sender issue, this is not the military. We're not trying to chase down unsolvable problems. We don't need to make a problem out of nothing just so we can get credit for solving it. That's a waste of everybody's time. So we're going to go with the easier solution. We're going to protect the boards a little bit better because there is no feasible way for us to predict every single way that the return to sender thing is going to go down. What we can do for every scenario is to protect the board a little better. And if it shows up a couple days later, that's okay because stuff just happens. Nobody's gonna get too upset, at least with us, that the shipping got delayed a little bit. But people will be upset with us if our board arrives damaged. So how do we protect these boxes? Do we completely redesign our packaging? Do we go for brand new boxes and, and, and pay a ton of money to redo our nice printed text laden boxes? Do we add more crinkle paper? Do we make custom padding for all of the corners? What do we do? Well, according to AVE, rule number one of troubleshooting is do the easiest thing first. And for us, that is simply adding more padding. Can we stuff something else in the box that makes it a little bit more protected? It's gotta be cheap, easy, and fast. There's a joke there, I'm just gonna leave alone. But it's gotta be cheap, easy, and fast because we already have kind of an involved packaging process. We don't really wanna add too much complexity. I mean, you saw the war we had over the sticker and string. By the way, Team Sticker won. I mean, we're trying to eliminate as much as possible from our packaging process, but still keeping a luxury experience. And then we got to thinking, is it really a luxury experience if these boxes are showing up absolutely scuffed up and destroyed? Not really. So instead of trying to stuff something in the box, how about we stuff something outside the box? So think outside the box, if you will. So we hopped on our buddy's website. Our buddy's name is Uline. He's been very good to us over this last year. And we found some boxes that we knew would fit over our original black and white Samara Table Company boxes. They're like $2, $2 for a box that's much thicker than our current boxes and will pad it much better and our other box fits inside of it perfectly. Combined with the, the price of the box and the additional shipping because the box is a little bit bigger, $2, $2 on a theoretically $200 product. I will gladly pay $2 to not have to deal with an upset customer. Not to mention, this also helps our reputation. Now people are gonna open up the nasty box, see the nice box. It's just gonna up the perceived value of our products because the box is gonna be nice and clean and sleek, just like when we tape them up and we're super proud of them. So we put in an order for 250 of these boxes and we were not expecting a pallet to show up this morning. Let's go take a look at what they look like. the lesson in all this is expect curveballs. You're not going to do everything perfect the first time around because if you try to think through everything, you'll never leave your basement and get started. Another lesson in all this is that not every single problem needs to be faced head on and completely overhauled. We couldn't fix the whole issue of boxes getting returned to sender, but we could fix the issue of the boxes getting too beat up from being returned to sender. I mean, that's the problem anyway, right? And now we don't even need to address the return to sender issue. And that's what our buddy Martin is figuring out with the marble machine. He always says the best part is no part. If you can solve a problem by eliminating the parts, it's better than making the existing parts better. If you want to see the progress of our new business, click here. If you want business tips and advice to maybe start your own business, click here. Ask me how I do it, I just stick to the plan.